Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I did post an opinion poll few days back asking if I should prepare an interview related video. So here I am in my first dedicated interview questions related video. Today we will start with very basic concept and see few important questions asked in an interview for Java arrays. We will start with very basic questions. So without any further delay, let's start. So the first question is which of the correct way is to declare an array of string of size 5. So here we have two options in front of us. You can pause the video and think about the correct answer and in the end you can comment like how many questions you got it right. So out of these two options, both of these options are correct. So we have already discussed different ways to declare an array in Java and both of these were there. For more details, you can check out the playlist where we have explained the complete detail of array list. But personally, I follow the first one to declare any kind of array in Java. Next question is, can we change the size of an already declared array? The answer to this is no, we cannot change the size of an array once we declare it. This thing also we have explained in our arrays video. This is actually the main disadvantage of array that we cannot change its size. To overcome this problem, we have array list. So if we want to add more elements than the declared size, we need to create a new array and add those elements in that. Next is, what will be the output of below code snippet? So here we have this code where we have declared an array and we are trying to add two elements and in the end we are trying to print the whole array. So you can pause the video and think about the answer. So in this case actually this should result into an exception which is array store exception and that too will happen at the runtime. That means you will not get any exception or error at the compile time. So whenever you try to execute the program, only at that time this exception will occur. This exception is nothing but when you try to store a non-compatible element to an array object, then this exception will occur. So here we can see we have declared uh, an array of object type, but we are using the string implementation. That means we will be only able to store string elements inside ARR array. So here uh, at the zeroth index we have stored hello but at the first index we are trying to store a number. So at this particular line this exception will occur which is array store exception. Next is can we declare an array with size less than zero or negative? Declare an array but we want to give the size in negative number. This actually is not possible because this will result into an exception which is also a runtime exception that is negative array size exception so your code will not give you any error while you are compiling it it will compile successfully but at the runtime it will throw this exception next is what is an anonymous array we have also discussed regarding anonymous arrays in our arrays video so what is an anonymous array so as the name suggests this array does not have any name that is an array without a reference so let's see an example for that so we can directly suppose i want to print an a length of an array which is having elements one two three so here in this statement i am declaring and uh, adding the elements in array in the single line but i'm not assigning it back to any reference variable so in that way it is termed as anonymous array this will result into output of three Again, we have some code snippet. Now let's see what will be the output for this code. So here we have first uh, names one array of type string having size three, and then we have names two uh, array with the size of 10. So if we try to assign names one is equal to name two, and after that we try to print names one dot length, then what will be the output? You can pause the video again and think about your answer. The answer will be 10 because compiler will only check if the type is same for both the arrays which is string in this case and is same and after this the names one will start pointing to the object uh, to which earlier names two was pointing. So in that case uh, the names one will become that same array of size 10. Next question is how to copy an array to another array. 
so there are various methods for that so to be precise we have four different methods available in java to copy an array first one is using standard for loop we can iterate through uh, the first array using for loop and keep on adding the elements to other array in that for loop second one is we can make use of arrays class which is available in java.util so in that we have dot copy of method so here we can define uh, we can copy one array to another array third one is we can make use of system dot arrays copy method so this method resides in system class so here we have various arguments which are required first one will be uh, the source array from where we want to copy and then the index of uh, in the source array from where we want to copy third will be the destination array the new copy that we want to create from first array fourth one will be the index number for, uh, to which we want to add in the destination array and the last one is how many elements we want to copy from the source array using this method also we can make a copy of one array to another array the last one is clone method so clone method is uh, a already provided in object class so using that itself we can copy like uh, one array to another array with it now what is array index out of bound exception this is one of the most occurring exception while in while we are trying to access any kind of uh, index based data structures so which is uh, array here itself so this is a runtime exception which occurs when our program tries to access an invalid index of array that is if an array is there of size 5 that means we have indexes starting from 0 to 4 and if we try to access 5th 6th or uh, any element lesser than 0 then this exception will occur now the next question that can come to your interview is uh, you have two different arrays and you want to find the common elements present in both the arrays so how we can do that so for that uh, there are a couple of approaches the first one which is straightforward is to iterate through both the arrays using nested for loop that is first we iterate through uh, one array using for loop and inside that for loop we can uh, iterate through the other array and try to compare all the elements of second array with the first element of uh, first array so this thing has to be repeated for all the elements of first array and second array and whatever values are equal those we can store it to a set variable so that in the end we can have a distinct values present but we have another approach secondly we can convert both the arrays to uh, hash set itself and then we can apply retain all methods so if you remember in our previous video we have seen that in case of uh, in case of hash set we can do mathematical set operations so finding a common element means we need to find the intersection of two different sets so that can be achieved using retain all method so we can convert both the arrays to hash set and after that apply retain all then it will return us the common elements present in both the arrays now uh, the last question for this video uh, and also the most important one this will be uh, asked most of the time in interviews and examinations also so what exactly is the difference between array and array list so array is are of uh, fixed length that we have already seen we cannot change its length once we have declared but on the other hand array list is of variable length so if you see the declaration of array list we do not provide anything uh, related to its size but for arrays we need to provide the size of an array so second point we cannot change the size of an array once we create so it is same as that length is fixed but in case of array list the size of array list grows and shrinks as we add or remove the elements so that depends on the load factor and uh, the initial capacity of the data structure next one is arrays does not support generics but in case of array list uh, they support generics so in that way array lists are uh, type safe <clears throat> the last one uh, we can use arrays to store both primitive types as well as reference types that is objects but in case of array list we can only store reference types in array list the primitive types are not allowed but if we want to use them we can make use of wrapper classes like integer or uh, double those wrapper classes which are available to uh, store the int or double values <clears throat> additionally if we see array list internally uses array itself to store the elements but the allocation of memory that is happening on the dynamic side yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching see you next time